let's go get us a swing set. Today, I'm in Southern Louisiana with Garrett Ryan, a master's student at Louisiana State University. His research is part of a collaborative effort to look at the migratory routes and habits of Swainson's warblers, as well as the connectivity between different populations. We started our day cruising down a remote road, heading into these warblers' favorite habitat. We are looking to ban some Swainson warblers here, and uh, we took a really long frontage road to get in, and I hopped in uh, his field vehicle because he said the roads can get kind of bad out here. It's very forested. On the way, Garrett told me more about his research. The main goal of this study is to uh, deploy what's called light level geolocators. They're very similar to GPS units, uh, except that they don't actually take a point. They just read light because it's um, for a smaller lightweight bird it can't have something with a big battery and based off of sunrise and sunset and day length uh, over the course of a year with this unit sitting on its back, um, we'll be able to tell where it migrates to for the winter. And that way we can tell where each population in the US goes for the winter, what's known as migratory connectivity, seeing if they're all going to the same place or if it doesn't really matter where they come from, they're you know, mixing it up in the wintering grounds. So this project will kind of figure out where exactly each breeding population goes. I have already put out all of my geolocators. What we can do today is go see one of the birds. Let's go get us a swing. Since all of Garrett's geolocators are already put out, our goal is to catch, band, and take data on a currently unbanded bird. We walked into the forest where Garrett knew a Swainson's warbler had a territory. Here we set up a mist net in order to try to catch one of these secretive birds. The best way to catch birds, and this is at banding stations or if you're like me who are target netting species, mist net is, as you'll see, this very, very thin net uh, that has several what are called trammel lines that go across. And when you fold it open, uh, it creates these pockets. So. The birds won't be able to see it. It looks like, you know, it doesn't even look like spider webs. Like sometimes it's just invisible and people run into it too. <laughs> Have you uh, run into yours yes, yet? Yes, I've run into mine, <laughs> even me. Um, and, uh, but with all these pockets created, when they fly in, they'll hit the net and they'll just bounce in and they fall into one of these pockets. And then they're safely secured in that pocket until I come over and take him out. So this will be a matter of getting him in earshot. If they can hear it, they'll come to it. It's just a matter of this speaker reaching, reaching them. And sometimes I'll have to, like if he can't hear it, I'll have to walk around, let him hear it, get closer to him, let him hear it, and kind of walk him back here. We played the Swainson's Warbler song to hopefully lure the bird into our net. There he is. See him starting to flutter down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Wow. It's like a drab bird, but it's like a beautiful drab, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, almost, you know, this cream colored yellow on his breast. And yeah, a nice rufous cap. So does this one have one of your... No, no. So this one, this is a new bird, brand new bird. Uh, the birds with the geolocators would also have leg bands on. Mm -hmm. But that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to put some bands on him. We're going to measure him and take some morphometrics. And then we'll set him on his way. We banded our warbler and also collected a variety of other morphometric data. Once we were finished, I got to send our Swainson's Warbler on his way. He likes it here. I know, <laughs> he like... does. I'm actually a little comfortable. 
Yeah, you blow on his back a little bit more. There it goes. There it goes. That's a that's the best sign we can we can ask for is if he's just immediately starts singing. The Swainson's Warbler is a large brown warbler with a straight bill, dark eye stripe, and lighter brown cap. They breed in the southeastern United States and migrate to their wintering grounds further south. Swainson's Warblers can be notoriously hard to see, and they forage in dense, viney areas and use their bill to flip over leaves in search of small invertebrates to eat. Nests are created in vines or other plants off the ground and males will aggressively defend their territories, which have been known to be as large as 45 acres. Sweet, man. That was awesome. Yeah, that was awesome. We're, uh, we're going to go try to find maybe a, a couple more. We walked through the forest towards another Swainson spot. On the way, Garrett took me to see an enormous old cypress tree that was actually big enough to stand in. He suspected it was never logged because it was hollowed out. Oh wow. Whoa. That's crazy. Standing inside a tree. After enjoying the cypress tree, we tried to locate another Swainson's warbler without success. But we did manage to see some prothonotary warblers. Well, this has been super cool so far. We banded the one Swainson's. We were looking for another one with the um, light sticks on its back, but it wasn't around. Um, saw some prothonotaries in there, Acadian flycatchers. We heard that chat earlier, uh, which is, of course, one of my personal favorites. Really buggy. You know the mosquitoes are bad when it's super hot and you're wearing long sleeves um, just so you don't get bit. They love to go for the hands anyways, though. We're going to try to find some other Swainsons in here too to band as well. We trudged back through the muck and did manage to locate another Swainsons, but it had already been banded so we let it be. We also took note of some interesting non-avian species. Yeah, you can see it. It's body like pulsating as it. Yeah, and you see his head. Breathing. I mean, they can turn their head 360 very easily. They, they can see all around them. In one of these uh, pools of water back here, we have a little school of bullheads, and they'll all kind of cluster together and hang out for safety. And so it's uh, awesome to find those little guys in kind of this remote area. Hard to say what species they are when they're so young. And we are walking further down the trail, still looking for new Swainsons. Heard a barred owl earlier as well. We turned our attention back to the birds and noted a number of interesting species. Without seeing or hearing a new Swainsons, and the day becoming hotter, we decided to conclude our banding efforts. It's a little late in the day now and it's getting hot, so I think we're going to call it. We got our one Swainsons that we were able to band, and then we also saw the one that was previously banded too. So, pretty good day out here. Definitely, we had a good string of like non-bird stuff too, and some other um, pickups like seeing the cuckoo was cool. And barred owl and all that. Successful day? Success, yeah. Success. Since filming, the warblers have been tracked and maps of their migration routes, stopover sites, and wintering grounds have been created, and results will be coming soon. Garrett has also started using barometric geolocators in his research, which collect more data than other methods. Hopefully the final results will shed even more light on the secret lives of Swainson's warblers. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. <laughs> Came with the hat.